I found 11 of the highest paying work from home jobs. Some of these are going to be entry level, so they don't require any experience at all. And some of them are going to require a few years of experience, but typically you can go into these jobs from just about any other type of job, but all of them are going to be very high paying. And the first one on the list is going to be a narrative designer. Now, this is one where you can get into it without any experience, but it does help if you have some experience working in the video game industry and narrative design designers make about $60,000 a year. And basically you're responsible for creating the storyline, narrative and dialogue for video game characters. So if you're passionate about video games, this might be a good one for you. Now, some of the skills you might need for this position is a passion for storytelling, exceptional writing skills, the ability to create engaging characters, the ability to also create compelling narratives and an understanding of interactive media and game design principles. And the way to get started with this one is first by building a great portfolio. There is no traditional path to get into narrative design. So basically what you want to do is create a good portfolio and then network a lot and apply to as many jobs as possible. But overall, I'm going to give this one an eight out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be an AI trainer. And this is basically exactly what it sounds like. You are going to be training AI by providing it data and feedback, and that's going to help it to refine its algorithm to improve its performance and accuracy. This is almost like being a life coach for AI which is kind of weird to think about. Now, this is one where you do not need to have previous experience or a degree or anything like that. It is an entry level job that you can get with no experience. And it does pay about $54,000 a year. Now, some of the skills that would really help is an understanding of machine learning concepts. You don't, of course, have to be really good at machine learning because it's very complicated, but you want to understand the concepts behind it. Also experience working with data annotation and labeling tools. And you also want to be familiar with certain programming languages such as Python or R. And this is another one where it's such a new profession that there is no traditional path to getting into it. So your best bet is to build up a good portfolio, network, and then apply to as many jobs as possible. So some of the pros here are there's high demand and competitive salaries in the AI industry. This is an entry level job, but it could lead to much better jobs down the line and the opportunity to contribute to AI development. Some of the cons here are, of course, the need to stay up to date with the rapidly evolving field of AI and dealing with complex and challenging data sets and algorithms. But overall, I really like this one. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be an academic editor. And this is where you're going to be reviewing and refining things like academic papers, dissertations, theses or theses, kind of a weird word and other types of scholarly work. And with this position, you'd expect to make about $55,000 a year. Now, this is one where it really does help to have a degree in a relevant field. And because of that, you'll probably have quite a bit of experience working in academic writing already. So this could be a good option for people who got a degree they're not necessarily happy with it, but they want to make the most out of it. And some of the pros here are going to be that remote work allows flexibility and freedom to work from anywhere. You get the opportunity to engage in diverse academic topics, and you can enjoy intellectual stimulation and continuous learning. Some of the cons here are it can involve working with tight deadlines. It definitely requires a very meticulous attention to detail and limited face-to-face -face interaction may lead to occasional feelings of isolation. Overall, I'm going to give this one a seven out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be an SEO specialist. And this is a great career. There's tons of opportunity here. Now, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And basically what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get websites to rank at the top of Google or other types of search engines. So some things that you might be doing here is of course, conducting keyword research, analyzing website performance, optimizing content and implementing strategies to increase organic traffic. So basically mm -hmm. when you go to Google and type in how to get a girlfriend, that website would show up at the top. And SEO specialists make about $57,000 a year. Now, again, this is an entry level position. You can get into this without having a college degree or previous experience. And in other SEO related positions that are higher, you can make much, much more than this. Now, some of the skills you want to have here are a strong understanding of search engine algorithms, keyword research, on page and off page optimization techniques, and the ability to use analytical tools. A great way to get started here is to take my friend Seth's free digital marketing masterclass because SEO is a type of digital marketing. Marketing. In fact, I think it's one of the most profitable types. And my friend Seth has helped thousands of people get into digital marketing. So definitely check that out. I'll put it down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Now, some of the pros here are going to be high demand for SEO specialists in the digital landscape. This is perfect for remote work. Most people that work in SEO do work remotely and you have the potential to work with diverse clients in various different industries. Some of the cons are SEO can be competitive. You basically have to continuously adapt to the Google updates and the changing marketing landscape. Results
results can also take time, and this requires patience and persistence. But it also means that it kind of has long feedback loops. So if you're testing things out, you're not gonna figure out whether those tests went well until maybe like three months down the line. Whereas if you're doing paid ads, you pretty much see the results right away. And then you also have the need for ongoing analysis and optimization. But overall, I'm gonna give this one an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. I think it's great, especially at the entry level. The next one on the list is going to be a learning specialist. And this is basically where you're going to be designing and developing effective learning programs. And oftentimes this type of education is going to be delivered remotely. And I like this quote by Nelson Mandela, which is education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And learning specialists can expect to make about $65,000 a year. Now with this one, it does help to have a bachelor's degree. You don't need to, but it definitely helps to have a bachelor's degree in something like education or instructional design. And there's also certain certifications out there like the CPLP. And the pros here are there's going to be a lot of opportunity to shape the educational experiences and inspire personal growth of young people. There's potential to work with diverse learners and industries. And it's an impactful role in fostering knowledge acquisition and skill development. Some of the cons here are there's limited face-to-face -face interaction and potential challenges engaging learner engagement. There is a lot of need for self-discipline and motivation to manage remote work effectively. And you're going to need to continuously adapt to technological advancements and e-learning platforms. So this is a pretty good one. It got especially good the last few years since pretty much everything went remote. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of seven out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a sports data analyst. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Moneyball, this is basically what they were doing in that movie. And you're going to be collecting, analyzing, and interpreting data related to sports. And this is going to help the decision makers within different sports franchises make important decisions. So in the movie Moneyball, for instance, a sports data analyst basically said that the most important metric because he gets on base is getting on base, right? People that actually are able to hit the ball and get on base. It's not how many home runs they were hitting or you know how often they hit home runs, it was their ability to get on the base. And so they were able to get a bunch of really good players at a cheap price because of the fact that they realized this is the most important stat. That's good for us, it's cheap. In more recent times, the Golden State Warriors have also taken advantage of this and that's why they started shooting so many more three-pointers than other teams and they completely changed the entire NBA by doing that. In sports, data analysts make about $67,000 a year. Now, some of the skills that you need to have to get into this position are going to be a strong background in mathematics, statistics, and data analysis, and proficiency in programming languages such as Python or R. So it does help here if you have a degree in statistics, mathematics, or computer science, but you don't need to have that degree. You can make up for it with certifications, and you can also build a great portfolio. So some of the pros here are you get to combine your passion for sports with data analysis skills, and you have a high earning potential. Some of the cons here are the need for a strong understanding of both sports and data analysis, and working with large data sets and tight deadlines can be challenging. So overall, this is a pretty good one, especially good if you're a fan of sports and you wanna work in the sports industry. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be a sales coach. And this is basically where you're gonna be providing guidance, training, and motivation to sales teams. And that's going to help them achieve their targets and maximize the revenue of the company. Now, sales coaches make about $81,000 a year, but this is kind of an umbrella term that encompasses a bunch of different kind of sales type positions. So for instance, a company might hire a full-time sales coach to coach their teams. They also might bring in a sales coach for a contract, or as a sales coach, you might be more of kind of like a sales manager. But either way, there is a ton of opportunity within sales. And some of the skills you would need to have here is, of course, strong communication skills, strong interpersonal skills, and a deep knowledge of sales techniques. Now, with this one, of course, you would have to have some sales experience in order to become a sales coach. Some of the pros here are going to be an opportunity to positively impact the success of a sales team, the satisfaction of witnessing the growth and success of individuals and teams under your guidance, and the ability to constantly sharpen your own sales skills and stay up to date with industry trends. Some of the cons here are going to be that it requires the ability to motivate and inspire individuals who may have different learning styles and motivations. It can be challenging to maintain engagement and accountability in a remote coaching setting, and 
and you need to continually adapt to changing market conditions and sales strategies. Overall, I'll give this one an 8.5 out of 10 opportunity score. The next one on the list is going to be an operations analyst. An operations analyst typically gather data to improve the efficiency of the operations of an organization. So a lot of this might include automating certain processes within an organization and making sure that the right person is doing the right job. Now, this is a job that's growing at 23% according to BLS. So very fast growing job. And you'd expect to make about $74,000 a year. Now, some of the skills you need to have for this position are a strong analytical and problem solving ability, proficiency in data analysis tools, attention to detail, and the ability to communicate insights effectively. Most people who work in this career do have degrees, but it doesn't actually require one. You can get into these roles without a degree, but in that case, you'd have to make up for it with good experience or a really good portfolio. So some of the pros here are going to be remote work flexibility and the ability to work from anywhere, the opportunity to contribute to improving operational efficiency and business performance, and high earning potential and career growth opportunities. Some of the cons here are it can involve working with large amounts of data and complex analysis. It may require dealing with tight deadlines and demanding stakeholders, and remote work can sometimes feel isolating with limited face-to-face -face interaction. So I'm going to give this one an 8 out of 10 opportunity score. I think it's pretty good. But it's a little bit harder to get into than some of the other ones on the list. The next one on the list is going to be a Java developer. So basically, you're going to be designing, developing, and maintaining different systems and applications. And you're going to be doing this using the Java programming language. And as a Java developer, you'd make about $100,000 a year. So this is one where it does help to have a degree. That's a way that many people go. But a lot of people get into this by self-study. A lot of people take certifications. A lot of people do some boot camps. There's many different ways to get into Java development. It used to be much easier to get into. It has gotten harder in recent years, especially with the tech layoffs. It used to be that you could get into these positions without having any skills whatsoever, basically. But now you do actually have to know your stuff. So some of the skills you want to have here is, of course, a strong understanding of Java itself. You also want to have proficiency in related technologies such as frameworks, databases, and version control systems. And you want to have a solid grasp of software development principles in general. Some of the pros here are high demand and competitive salaries for Java developers, opportunities to work on diverse projects and contribute to the development of various applications. And some of the cons are going to be continuous learning and staying up to date with the newest Java technology and the Java ecosystem. And you're going to have to be okay with challenging and complex problem solving. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of nine out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be very similar, which is a front end engineer. So you're also going to be coding here, but typically you're going to be working on the front end of a product, which is basically what the consumer sees. So if it's a website, you'd be working on the website itself that the consumer sees. If it's an application, you'd be working on the part of the application that the person is actually using and seeing. Now, front end engineers make about $130,000 a year. And very similar to Java developers, this used to be a lot easier to get into. You don't need to have a college degree, but if you do, it helps. You know, having a computer science degree is great, but you can definitely make up for that by just simply having the skill. But it's definitely harder to get into than it was five or 10 years ago. But some of the pros here are the opportunity to showcase your creativity and design skills while building user-friendly interfaces. So it's not as analytical as back-end development. And of course, there is a ton of opportunity for remote work and flexible jobs. Now, the cons here are you do have to keep up with the ever-evolving languages and frameworks that change like every three to five years. And you have to collaborate with designers as well as back-end developers to make sure the entire product is cohesive. But overall, I'm going to give this one an opportunity score of 9.5 out of 10. The next one on the list is going to be a telepsychiatrist. So I decided to include this one on the list because I wanted to show you that even professions where you think you absolutely have to be in person, right? There's no ability to work remote. In this day and age, there's a lot of remote work opportunities. Now, of course, for 99% of people, they're never going to become a telepsychiatrist because you have to have a doctorate for that job. But there's lots of different healthcare related jobs or jobs that you wouldn't expect to have the ability to work remote that do actually have those opportunities. You just have to look for them. So I think everyone knows what a psychiatrist is. Telepsychiatrists make about 226 thousand dollars a year and the pros of this one are of course high earning potential and the flexibility to work from home the cons of this one is there is limited physical presence with patients which that could be a pro or a con i guess depending on what you want and there can be potential challenges for diagnosing patients without in-person assessments but overall i just kind of wanted to use this one as an example obviously this isn't going to be a great opportunity for everyone but i'll give it an opportunity score of eight out of ten now if you haven't checked it out already i did make a video on the 21 highest paying work from home jobs, which gives a bunch of other examples. And you can check that out by clicking right here.